Remember what our memory verse was for last week? Can you say it? Yes, you're right. My God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Before we get to our Bible lesson for this week, we are going to sing that song, My God will meet all your needs. So stand up, shake all your Shake all your muscles out and let's get ready to join the Sunrise National Park Band. Two, three. learn in the Bible that Jesus was preparing for his ministry. He lived about 33 years here on earth. Verse 30 we don't know too much about. But when Jesus decided, when God told him that it was time for his ministry to start, the first thing he did was get baptized by his cousin John the Baptist. And then it, the Bible tells us he went into the desert to be tempted by Satan. And this gives us a very exciting story of what true power is. Watch as the puppets demonstrate what happened. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came. If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. No, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. The scriptures also say, You must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give you all to you if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. Then the devil went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. Jesus teaches us how to resist temptation. He uses the power of the Word of God that he has memorized. It would appear that the devil even has memorized some of the Bible, yet he always twists its meaning. He tried to impress Jesus, but to no avail. Jesus used the Bible to speak truth. The devil used it to try to trick. How will we be able to resist temptation? Well, it's obvious. Surely all of us have experienced difficult temptation and we fall into the trap of the devil. Sometimes we don't even need the devil to tempt us. It can be a friend or even ourselves just deciding to disobey because we simply want our own way. But remember, the Bible promises us that God will give us a way out. Today's memory verse is a great verse. It's one you should all learn because it's on the very subject we've been talking about today, temptation. Let's read it together. It's here on the whiteboard. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That verse I have used in my life so many times to remind me that when temptation comes, there is a way out. I don't have to fall. I can depend upon God's strength, God's power, real power, is to be able to resist Satan, resist the temptation to do something you shouldn't do, or to not do something you should do. That kind of temptation will strangle you unless you rely upon God's power. Once more through the verse, let's say it again. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I'm going to erase a couple words in this verse, if you don't mind. So you better look at it carefully. I'm very strong. <laughs> let's do it this way. Right again. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you are and bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out. 1 Corinthians 10.13 Notice that it doesn't say you're only human so that you can do it yourself. It says you have to rely upon God's way out. Here goes. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But He will also 
when you are, when, when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out. First Corinthians 10, 13. I got tripped up. Let's not get this wrong. Eliminate that pronoun. Rhymes with B. And he, another he. And A. Again we go. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out. You forgot the also. Also, you're correct. Let's remember that. Losing this but, we're using this beyond, losing this will, and we're losing the word out. Beyond is really now fully erased. Beyond is now fully erased. Can we do it? We'll see. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out. 1 Corinthians 10.13 One more time. I'm going to do this one, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Don't forget to erase the Bible reference too. How's that? How does it start? You remember the first word? God, God is, is faithful. faithful. He, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he, he will also provide a way out. Us out. I was going to say this is 10 and 13. A way out. I think you kids know it. Stephen, come on up here and say it. Okay. We'll all say it with you. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out. 1 Corinthians 10.13 Thank you very much. Hey boys and girls. We're here to conclude this lesson on temptation. We saw the puppets. They were did a fabulous job of portraying Jesus and Satan. Satan trying to get into Jesus and get him to sin. And he wouldn't do it. He resisted that temptation by using scripture. And you know, there's a lot in the Bible about how to handle temptation. The memory verse we had certainly addresses that. But also, what the important factor you have to know is that God's Word is available to you and I. If you have a Bible, if you can read, you need to get into that book. You need to read it. Not just to learn the fabulous stories that are in there. Not just to be in awe at how tremendous God is. But to recognize that He's providing this for you as a weapon. Yes. You heard me. The Bible is called a sword. It is your weapon not only to attack, but also to defend yourself when you get attacked. The Bible is powerful. It defeats Satan, and it will, in your situation when you are tempted, be your most useful tool to allow the Holy Spirit to recall verses that you've learned, either in Samarama, or that when you've read the Bible, you remember. And this lesson can't conclude without you understanding how important that book is to you and me. I challenge you to when you really make a decision about following Jesus, 
you will begin to read His Word every day as a personal message to you, not just a history book, not just something that has some nice stories, but something that is going to be valuable to you the rest of your life. So read it now while you're young. Read it and try to recognize what it is saying to you that God's going to use to help you not only defeat Satan, but to resist any temptation that comes your way. God gives us the tools to do that. He provides a way of escape, but you're going to need the power of God's word so that you can stand up to your friends who will try to get you to do something that's wrong, stand up to other people who will mislead you about who knows what, You'll get it in school, you'll get it in books all over the place. There'll be plenty of things to try to direct you in the wrong way. God's Word is true. God's Word will be your most helpful tool for you to resist temptation. Read the Bible. Thank you, Ranger Ron, for teaching us that lesson on how we can get true power in Jesus. Here is Miss Heather with our craft instructions for the week. Hello campers, welcome to week three of Summerama. Today's craft is a marble magnet. You'll also need some tacky glue as well as the crayons from last week's craft. These are all the supplies you'll find in your craft kit for this week. You have three pieces of papers, all different designs. You also have three magnets that are very strong and they might stick to each other. And you'll have three marbles. These marbles have one flat side and one curved side. Our first step is going to be to color your little round pieces of paper. On the paper you'll find a campfire, a cross, and a compass. Choose any colors you want. You have a lot of options and make sure you get not just the picture but also the backgrounds too because we'll want these to be bright and colorful when we hang them as magnets. I'm going to speed up my coloring now but take as much time as you need to color in each of these pictures. You'll need to do that before we move on to our next step. Okay, now that everything is colored, you're going to take your colored papers, your marbles, your magnets, and your glue. Take one of the marbles, and on the flat side of the marble, you're going to put a very thin layer of the tacky glue. So you'll notice on mine, I go in a circular motion, and you'll even see some holes and gaps where it looks like there's no glue, totally fine. Next, you're going to take your piece of paper, one of the colored pictures, and put it face down so that your colored side is touching the glue, and press that on really tight. See how you can see the picture through the marble? It's pretty cool. Next step, on the back you want to put one dot of the tacky glue, just a very small dot. Grab one of your magnets and press it on nice and tightly. And then you're going to just set it aside so it can dry. Repeat this process with the other two magnets that you have. Sticking the paper on the flat side of your marble pressing it down firmly, and then wiping off any excess glue that comes out the sides. Totally normal, I had a paper towel nearby to help with the mess. Last one.
Some of your papers may be bigger than the marble. Just take your scissors and trim away any excess that you see. You'll want to make sure the paper is the same size as the marble and there's nothing hanging over. And there you have it, there's your marble magnet. Once the glue dries, it'll be clear and you can stick the magnet on your fridge or any metal surface. I hope you enjoyed making those magnets today. Have them ready to show during our Zoom meeting on Friday afternoon. Also, if you memorized your memory verse for this week, you can say it at our Zoom meeting as well. This week, make sure you work on your trek guide for lesson three. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this lesson that you've taught us about how we can get true power in Jesus. And thank you so much for your word and how it is your word that we can use to help us when we face different trials or different needs and are in need of help. We pray that you would help us to um, read your word regularly and to memorize your, your scripture so that at any time we would be able to remember your words whenever we face difficulties of any kind. Be with us this week until we come back again for the next lesson. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to end by singing the song, It Is Written. So I need you to stand up one more time and join our Sunrise National Park Band. Temptation and you're tempted